Welcome back again. I think that we're almost done with the basic inventory system and uh, it's at this stage. We're going to make it so that it actually has a um, a good way for us to click on it rather than doing the 3D model detection. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the item menu skin and we're going to see what we want to use. There are a lot of options here for how we want to, if we want to surround it with anything. I don't think we do. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use on GUI uh, to detect mouse clicks without using the button um, trick, because you know, buttons actually return a boolean if they've been clicked on. I'm going to show you how to do it without that. So the first thing we need to do is go into our inventory. Here it is. So uh, we have this show in, sorry, it's, um, here it is, on GUI. And this is where we display all the items. We also want to check and see whether or not any of the items have been selected. So the first step to do that, excuse me, we need the item wrecked outside like this. And the reason for that is because we also need to check and see whether the mouse is inside that. So let's go ahead and do that. If event dot current event dot mouse position. Now this is interesting because this is actually reversed correctly. So this mouse position has the correct Y coordinate for our needs, whereas input dot mouse position, a mouse mouse position, this actually has the opposite Y coordinate. Eh. At least as I recall. Um, I'm not entirely sure that's true actually. One of them is Y reversed. We'll find out shortly. Uh, so if item rect dot contains event dot current mouse position. Now here is where we get to uh, do our little bit of experimentation. There we go. So we're going to pass in select it here. And the reason for that is because it will allow us, it, it allows the inventory object in question to understand that it's currently being highlighted. And if there are things that need to pop up, such as complex specs, you'll only do that when you're highlighted. Now to go ahead and test whether or not we're highlighted, we're going to go and change this so that it says if highlighted else. Now obviously this is just a debug thing to do. That's not what we want to actually have happen. See? Perfect. So we know that that, that is highlighted and we could in fact um, change what we're displaying, but we don't have enough complexity in our interface yet to have it understand that it needs to display anything extra. We don't have anything else to display. So instead, we're just going to, I've got inventory open twice. Brilliant. That'll lead to lots of bugs. Um, yeah, this is the right one. Uh, so what instead we're going to do is we're going to say if event.current.type equals event type dot mouse down. Now here is the difficult thing. Do you want lowercase m mouse down or uppercase m mouse down? They are in fact different events, and one of them doesn't exist. So this is where we are going to go ahead and mark this. So event.current.use, uh, no, uh, dot, what is it? There's a way to tell it that the current event has been used, and I think it is just use. Yeah. I think this is just how to do it, and that means that it won't uh, it won't propagate any further than this, so we don't have to worry about it falling through to anything below this item, um, such as, for example, the surface of the terrain. Uh, the other thing we need to do is we need to actually select it. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, this is where we normally do our selection here. We just need to do the exact same thing down here except we don't need to worry about the index because we've already got it. All right, so let's go ahead and see whether that works. So, whoa, thump. 
tick. And you can see that use didn't actually take effect properly. How unfortunate. I was really hoping that would work and it didn't work. Um, the problem is that this click here is not, uh, this is an on update click rather than an on GUI click, so it actually has a different set of priorities. Um, so we're back to having that same problem where the click falls through. Uh, on GUI doesn't run at the same, uh, in the same line as the update, so because this is update and this is on GUI, this runs and then that runs no matter how late we set this script execution. Um, and there's a lot of ways around that, and the easiest way around that is probably to redo the player I.O. script, um, which we will do shortly. Uh, not terribly shortly, but shortly, but soon enough. Uh, either way, the simple thing to do now is just to show you that it works. See, works fine. And we also left it with the fall through of checking for the 3D model. Uh, and that could be valuable in so certain situations, and there's really no reason to not allow it, so I'm going to leave it in place for now. Um, there's lots of work left to do. We haven't done the crafting system or anything yet, uh, and in addition, this is not a very good display. Um, there's a lot of things wrong with it. One of the things we want to do before I let you go is we want to actually zoom in even further. And the reason is because that'll give us a little bit more width and height. So let's go ahead and do exactly that by um, just changing the width and the height. Uh, this is something that is going to malfunction a lot. Uh, so you're going to want to make it adaptive at some point in the future. But we're still not at the point where that is viable. So um, uh, we're still going to manually program it in for the moment. We're going to make it adaptive once we've done crafting and we understand exactly what we want out of our displays. But this is a little bit larger, so it's a little bit easier to see. Now we can go ahead and make that uh, label a little bit easier to see as well. And the way we do that is we go into the item menu skin, we go into the label, here it is, and we can do whatever we want with it. So first off, let's center it. And then we can also put in an image. Um, or a border. Now the border isn't border of the background images. That's not what we want. Active hover and uh, normal background. Here it is. So let's go ahead and pick ourselves a background. We actually want something very generic. Um, we we would ideally have the exact same background as our uh, label, as our but uh, uh, a box. So let's take a look and see what that's got for its image. Box. It's got something called box but we don't have access to the box. There's no box. <laughs> no. It's in some special place where it's not listed. What a pain in the ass. Can we drag it? No. Sigh. So I'd have to manually create something, um, an image, uh, or clone the box or something. Um, I don't know where... It's kind of an odd thing to have happen where it doesn't doesn't show up here in the drop-down. Huh. Well, I'll deal with that later, because obviously we're going to want to customize the exact images in the background anyway. There we go. It all works. The player I.O. is still scummy, but that's okay. We're going to change that as soon as we get crafting done. Alright, so I'll see you next episode.